Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for St. John's Lutheran Church of Maguanago. It is Tuesday, <clears throat> November 15th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Jesus said to his disciples, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We continue this week with our devotions based on 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Today I read for you verses 6 through 13. Now, <clears throat> these things took place as examples for us that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, these happened to them as an example, but they are written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And an old saying in the church is, <clears throat> you don't get to choose to worship Everyone worships, um, even an atheist worships. The question is, who or what will be the, the object of your worship? Who is it that you turn to as your God? Who is it that you turn to to trust? And so the warning from Israel's history, and, and there's vivid examples in this section of, of how, how they did it out there in the wilderness that wasn't good for them, um, the warnings of Israel's idolatry are given to us as a warning. What's the warning for the church today? On the one hand, don't be arrogant. Don't be arrogant in your own self-sufficiency. Don't be arrogant in, in what you are able to do apart from Christ. And on the other hand, the warning is don't be complacent. The be careful, St. Paul says. Pay attention, pay heed. The temptations the Corinthians experienced were not new, and the temptations we experience are not new. Pay attention and recognize the way of escape. The way of escape is not, of course, a physical way. It's a person, and his name is Jesus. He is the way of escape for you. Whenever I teach on this section or give a devotion on this section, I am reminded of, a, of an article that was written years ago um, in the Ford and Christ magazine um, by Pastor Tom Jeske um, from Omaha, Nebraska. <clears throat> he, he takes on the common phrase, God will never give you more than you can bear. Um, and so, and he takes it on in this way, and I recognize how that phrase could be understood properly, but he takes it on citing those examples that God gives in the Old Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and concluding if, if you think you stand, take heed lest you fall. If you think you're standing firm, be careful lest you fall. It's not God will give you uh, will never give you more than you can bear. It's that sometimes God does overwhelm you. He overwhelms in life, and he overwhelms with death, and he overwhelms with times of trouble. 
and that there are times when it absolutely seems more than you can bear, and precisely at that time that you find your comfort and your rest, your way of escape in Christ, when you are swept off of your feet, when you are knocked flat off of your back, the strength for all of your struggles is found in him. Thank God that he does give you more than you can handle on your own. Because if you could handle it on your own, then what is the need for the Christ? But to be one who finds his security and his strength in him. And Paul's warning is, hey, see how this did not go well for them in the Old Testament? This is my encouragement to you, Paul says, and it's the encouragement 2,000 years later. Professor Jeske writes, we don't always stand tall. We're not able to handle every trouble, pain, distress, or difficulty. When we think we can, it's easy to forget grace, undeserved and free. But here we are in Christ to take comfort for his sake. And verse 13 says, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted upon your ability, but with the temptation he provides the way of escape. The final word today comes from Martin Luther. God receives none but those who are forsaken. He restores health to none but those who are sick. He gives sight to none but the blind and life to none but the dead. He doesn't give saintliness but to sinners, nor wisdom but to fools. He has mercy on none but the wretched and gives grace to none but those who are in disgrace. Yes, God does not save his children from temptations. He turns them toward Christ in the thick of them. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final hour and day when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us watchful, ever watchful, for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us now with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin, nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen.